Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Keeping Up With The Castle, your new show in discussion on all things Walt Disney World. On today's show, the Magic Kingdom entrance overhaul is now underway, the Astro Orbiter is now closed for refurbishment, Tony's most merriest town square party returns for the uh, Christmas party in Magic Kingdom, and then we also have that Jack Skellington is the brand new host for the brand new fireworks show for the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. Our discussion for this episode is going to be Brendan and I's review on the brand new Lion King live action remake that we recently saw. It came out on the 18th, so we're going to give you guys our full blown review. But all of that and more, up next. back to the show everybody the date is july 21st 2019 and this is episode 36 of the keeping up with the castle podcast and video cast my name is colin i will be your host and join with me every single episode my co-host brendan how are you man i'm doing good how are you doing very very yeah. good so as i mentioned before we've got some news but we also have our big lion king review yeah so, so excited for that yeah very excited to, to speak on that so um, Brennan, go ahead and dive into the news, take it away, and then let's get started. Alrighty. First up is the Magic Kingdom entrance overhaul. Walls are up at the entrance of the Magic Kingdom. Uh, permits uh, came out early April, and work has uh, really started to begin in this area. Um, this is where the the bag check area is, the, you know, the bus loop. There's just a lot of work going on over there. It's Pretty much they just put up a, a lot of walls. They got rid of a facade to the right-hand side in that picture you'll be able to see, but they're pretty much just, you know, getting a, rid of a little bit of stuff and probably taking out some bricks and some other things. So, Colin, uh, take it away with the next. All right, so for my first news topic, we have that the Astro Orbiter is now closed for refurbishment. So the closure is expected to last through to August 14th with a reopening date to guest on August 15th, 2019. The Astro Orbiter has been seeing quite some downtime this year with its breaking down quite often and a lot of maintenance work is now necessary per Disney Insiders. So this also leads to a few rumors that we've had of recent ever since Tomorrowland has been going through some small changes. Uh, the new sign is missing. We should see a new sleek uh, design coming soon. Um, we've seen some of the spires down the main alleyway change. Um, so. Hopefully, maybe we get some minor overlay on the Astro Orbiter, potentially some paint changes. Um, anything could help, so we can only cross our fingers and hope. But uh, go ahead with the next one, Brennan. Up next is Tony's Most Merriest Town Square Party Returns. Once again, this premium add-on event will return this year. It's going to be priced at $99 per person plus tax. Um, this is going to be a ticket that's an add-on to the very, very... Christmas party. The event starts at 9.30 p.m. and goes all the way till 12.30 uh, a.m. So this is a pretty long event and attendees at 11 p.m. will have access to a, a viewing station um, for the Once Upon a Time Christmas Parade. Um, and during this um, whole event you'll be able to get a lot of different treats. So for appetizers, you'll be able to get a different type of charcuterie board with meatballs, uh, mini hand-tossed pizzas, a boards and stuffed artichoke, pumpkin tarts, U-logs, cannolis, Christmas cookies, and red velvet cakes. A selection of complimentary beer and wine, and there's also a lot of different non-alcoholic beverages will be offered. Um, this event honestly sounds amazing. I'm definitely going to want to do it. Uh, really soon. I'm super excited. Me and Colin will definitely be doing this. All right, guys. So next up, we have that Jack Skellington is going to host the brand new fireworks show coming to the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. The official Disney Parks blog has shared some details about the show, which will see Jack Skellington from Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas serving as the host. With state-of-the-art projection effects, lasers, lighting, and fireworks filling the sky above Magic Kingdom, 
Jack has come to tell a not-so-scary story about how anything can happen on Halloween night. Jack's ghost dog, Zero, flies off carrying everyone along on a trick-or-treating adventure where four friends, Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Goofy, find themselves drawn into a mysterious haunted house. Their journey takes them from one room of the house to another, encountering dancing skeletons, waltzing ghosts, and a whole series of troublemaking Disney villains. So, um, that's a pretty cool theming, a pretty cool story that they have going on. I like how they have stories to, you know, what they're doing in the parks and at these events. I think that brings a little um, cool flair to it. Um, we also are going to have some attraction overlays during the uh, Halloween festivity season. So uh, the first one is going to be that Monsters World is coming to Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor in Magic Kingdom, where the cast of Monsters Inc. will learn more about the Halloween spirit. Uh, also, live actors will return to Pirates of the Caribbean uh, throughout the day, not just during the event. This is all throughout all the days for this these few weeks. Um, also, Space Mountain will continue to run the completely blackout version. And then we also will have special lighting and music back at the Mad Tea Party. So a lot of things are happening because of this event, but uh, mainly Jack Skellington is brand new, and he's going to be the host of the brand new fireworks show that Disney is titling, Disney's Not So Spooky Spectacular. All right, guys, so for our discussion, like I said, we are going to be doing a Lion King movie review so the live action just technically came out july 18th which was thursday of this past week and on that opening day me and uh, brendan both saw it separately yeah. um but we're gonna go ahead and give you guys each our personal reviews so go ahead brendan yeah so you know the lion king it's not really live action would you consider that was my first opinion when they were saying live action it's, it's cgi um, all CGI. It's all CGI, but uh, they did a fantastic job of like making the animals look realistic. Yeah. Um, in my uh, perspective, and they made like little twists to the st not even a twist to the story. They added in about thirty minutes of film, which I really like. They just expanded little things, and then on top of that, they just made like little twists in certain scenes, like. The uh, Kuda Matata scene, they just like add like little things that made it its own. Um, yeah, I've heard a lot of different things where they're saying you can't see emotions, but honestly, when Simba was crying when Mufasa died, right. I was still, I wasn't as emotional, but I was like, ooh, that, it you know, me. it hit me and it felt real. So I was like, I thought they did a good job, even though they couldn't portray the, you know, all their emotions. I think they did a great job with it. I liked how they extended it quite a bit, you know, but all around, I thought they did just a great job. Um, the and the one last thing I do, the music. Oh my yeah. God. The, the music was, I loved, I didn't think I would like, or I didn't know how I'd feel about Beyonce being in it, um, but she killed it. Uh, Childish Gambino, uh, Donald, Glover. Donald Glover, and then uh, Seth Rogen. I was really surprised by his voice. I was like, when you know, you hear it, and you're just like, I don't know. But as the movie went on, I was like, he killed it. Like, he was my favorite character in the movie. So uh, I would give this movie an 8.5. I almost was, yeah, it was 8.5. It was between an 8 and 8.5 when I first came out of the movie theater. I would give the original a 9 to a 9.5 if you guys want to see a perspective. It's not as good. But it is very, very, very close. Right. And golly, I can't wait to watch it again. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I can't wait to watch it again either. So I'll just go ahead and give you my take yeah. and my review. Um, overall, I thought it was a, a very, very well done movie. Um, right from the beginning, I, I remember the first couple minutes, it just looks like a 4K high-res Nat Geo <laughs> film. You see yeah. like the gazelle hopping and the lions yeah. are sleeping on the rock. And you're like, so are they showing us the movie yet? What's happening? And then all of a sudden you see, you know, Rafiki holding up Simba. And it just, my hair stood up on my arms. I think it arms. brings back memories. Yeah, too. it was very nostalgic. But still, um, it once they started to show the characters and Pride Rock, it all kind of, kind of came into fruition with me. And I was, I was already mind blown. You know, the CGI, like, like Brendan said, it's not live action at all. But the CGI 
was the best CGI I've personally ever seen in my whole entire life. So they did a fantastic job. All of their, mm -hmm. um, I guess, I don't CGI animators <laughs> are freaking incredible. <laughs> so cheers to that. But um, nonetheless, the movie was incredible. Like Brennan said, the music was great. The voice actors to, you know, the artists, uh, Beyonce and them, Childish Gambino. Yeah. I thought they were great. I had a feeling. Who was your favorite? Actually, I just got... We'll jump in there, but who's your favorite like voice actor for? My favorite Disney? voice, I can't remember the guy's name, but it was uh, Timon, the guy from Parks and Rec. Yeah, okay. he talked a lot and he was cracking me up. Seth Rogen yeah. was fantastic. I thought they were a good team together. They were an amazing team. They played off of each other really well, as did Timon and Pumbaa in the original. So I was yeah. very happy with that. But I'll say, Beyonce, her voice <laughs> wrecked every song in a good way. Like yeah, it's incredible. I mean, blew it away. Mm -hmm. Um, I really, really liked it. Some people wanted to see a completely changed Lion King. Some people wanted to see a carbon copy. I'd say it was 95% the same. Yeah. There was, uh, like, like Brennan said, some scenes had a little bit more detail added in. And there was a few, three, four, maybe five tops, three, four, uh, funny little mild adult humor jokes yeah, or they, spins thrown in there. Like in Akuna Matana, so. they put in, like, the extra words that they go... You know, it's not for the kids. Right, Usually right, they threw in that yeah. extra little thing. Just so, like little things. I, I, I enjoyed the film a lot. Um, as Brendan said, I, I would rate the original a nine, and I'm going to give this an eight and a half. Yeah. Um, I know we both <laughs> said pretty much eight and a half, and it's, it's the same rating, but, you know, I, I thought it was an incredible film. Yeah. That's me just being completely blatantly honest. I went in... Uh, well, we knowing I could have voted it a five, I could have given it a seven, I could have given it a ten. Yeah, we well, I do want to throw this out there is we always use IMDb to you know see if a movie is going to be good before it comes out. We right. were seeing it was you know in the fives. Yeah, and we were like, uh oh, fives. you know, we were kind of worried, but if you know, honestly, it was just a great movie. It I think the critics might have hit it in a little different way, but from a regular movie goer and Disney, Disney lover, fan, Disney I fan. loved it. Um, yeah. I think it did everything it needed to do. I liked it a lot, so you guys uh, heard it here. We <laughs> gave it an eight and a half, so now you guys know that's what the scale goes on. We rate it an eight and a half, it's an eight and a half. Um, <laughs> But no, I'm just kidding. Let, let us know in the comments what you guys think. Do you think it was a 5, a 10? Do you agree with us? Or do you agree um, with yeah. the critics because yeah. they wrote it a, you know, around a 5? Yeah, yeah, you never know. Let us know what you think and please explain why you may or may not agree with us. But all that aside, thank you guys so much for listening and joining in on this week's episode of Keeping yeah. Up With The Castle. Please hit that subscribe button and please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video also tap that bell icon oh, if yeah. you want some notifications when our new content is going to come out but all that aside thank you guys so much Have take a care good one.